And if you want to make a difference in your life, you have to take control and make things happen for yourself, right? And no matter, I can tell you exactly what to do right now today to make a big difference in your business. And if you don't move on it, it doesn't make any difference how, what I tell you. And that's really what this show is about. From Sarah Systems and Billy Go, this is No BS with Billy Stevens and Landon Brewer, the unfiltered straight shooting podcast that dives deep into the heart of home service trades to uncover the truth about running your business. You're entering the No BS zone with Billy and Landon. No BS with Billy and Landon. We're here again. Um, looking forward to you spending the next hour with us. We hope very that you get a lot of information from us and you learn something today and, you know, and at least we entertain you. Um, we're here to make it, make your hour light to, to take the stress off of you. And, uh, that I want to introduce my host, Landon Brewer, um, uh, here on the no BS podcast. Um, hello, hello. I'll echo Billy's point. We're here to entertain, provide you with value. And if you're not, you shouldn't listen to us. That's all I got to say. No, mm -hmm. I, that's well, awesome. what are we talking about today, Billy? Let's well, get to the point. What are we yeah, let's get about? to the point. Everybody's waiting for what we're going to do today. And so today we want to talk about how we've spent millions and millions of dollars in this industry for coaching and really and truly the, the numbers haven't improved. There's been no significant improvement in the EBITDA uh, as an average, as an industry um, overall. And the amount of money that's being spent is just mind-boggling it's it it may be in the billions i don't know it, it it's definitely a lot of money that's being spent on coaching and and i just think you know we want to do the no bs uh about coaching here today and and explain some things and simplify um what we're going to talk about and why coaching doesn't have to be so difficult and with any coaching system it's all about getting your customers to come back over and over and over again we know the game right that is the game that's played is to get them to keep paying you monthly to give them enough stuff to keep them engaged um that's that's the coaching mantra it doesn't matter it's this industry any industry that's just the way it goes down and i want to debunk some of that i want to i want to explain why i think that you could learn everything you need in 10 percent of that time and, well, and run with it. Maybe, maybe we start by asking the question, who's to blame? Like, is it the coach? Is it the company? Is it the manager? Is it the employees? Like, uh, you know, there's so, obviously some value of coaching out there. Like, why, why isn't it improving businesses? Like, is who do you blame for that? Well, that's a great analogy. And I'll tell you what, it's all of the above. It, it is as much fault of the contractor as it is of the coach, right? Um, the coach's job is to teach you something and then for you to implement and go forward with that. That is that is the whole idea of why you're paying a coach. If you're paying a coach to tell you stuff to do and you don't do anything with it, then you're just paying for a psychiatrist. You're just sitting on the couch listening and they're listening. That That's all you're doing. And so it comes back. Yes, it is. It is not necessarily the coach's fault it's the implementation of the owners managers technicians or whatever and if you want to make a difference in your life you have to take control and make things happen for yourself right and no matter i can tell you exactly what to do right now today to make a big difference in your business and if you don't move on it it doesn't make any difference how what i tell you and that's really what this show is about is like we got to do our part we, we go to these big shows, we spend thousands of dollars, we buy hotels, rooms, we get flights and we go across the country and we get all the free alcohol and we have fun with friends that we made on the circuit and we're doing all these things and we go to these shows and we learn a lot of things and then we get back on Monday morning and real life comes back in place. Everyone else at the business, they weren't out having fun drinking and having fun with everybody in the industry. They were in the grind while you were away and then... We come back and we're all fired up and we got all the stuff that we learned and we try to implement everything at one time and everything blows up on us and then we quit and we don't follow through or we don't make sure that it continues to go forward. And that is a lot of the blame. That That's really a lot of the problem is we don't take what we learn and do something with it. Now, what is the problem with that? Maybe we're learning too many things. Or maybe so many different things are being different or you're hearing for the first time. And when you have too much on your plate, you try to implement 
all of them instead of doing, you know, what I call the 5% rule. Pick one. Pick one. Improve your business with that one by 5% and then move to the next one. That would make a big difference. And so that's on the owners, managers, technicians, people in the office. That's on them to go, look, I want to get 1% or 5% better in this particular thing that we are going to change. And before I move on to the other ones or give up, I'm going to implement this 5%. We're going to follow through with it. We're going to make it the rule, if you will. And we're going to make sure that it continues to happen. And when it's in there and it's solid and everybody's doing their part, and we move to the next one. I think that would help a lot of people. I think that um, it, it's just the rush of so much information. That's the world we live in now today, right? I mean, we have so much information. I mean, 10 years ago, I didn't talk to my competitors. I can walk into one of my competitors down the street and have a cup of coffee with them now. Can you imagine that? I mean, that's that's true. I can do that. I do that. Yeah, I mean, we'll talk about business. We're having a cup of coffee. How's it going? How are you doing? Oh, yeah, it's great. You know, it's we have so much information and so much connectivity now that we're bombarded. And I think that being bombarded is causing us not to move forward. What's your take? Yeah, on? well, I, I think it's a couple of things. One, there's a wide array of coaches when you're talking about coaches, right? Uh, you got best practices groups out there, which are kind of coaches, right? Your, your, uh, you know, your next jars, SGIs, uh, you know, whatever, uh, different best practice groups. And some of those people actually have experience implementing the things they're going to coach you on how to implement, right? Some of those people, you know, so there's a value of that, right? Some of the best practices groups are, are just kind of like large smorgasbords where, like you say, you could take, 5% and implement it at your leisure and you decide, right? But, you know, I think that's the wrong approach. I think that most of these organizations, best practice groups, coaches, like it, it, it requires a lot of handholding, right? And I think that's where, uh, that's where it goes south on people, right? So if you just, if, if, if you said, Hey, uh, Landon, I'm going to, I'm going to coach you. And I'm going to, and I, I would come to you and say, Hey, here's, here are the problems I have. Here's the data that's uh, kind of illustrating the problems that I have. I haven't been to this level. So what do I do here, here, and here? And you're coaching me because you've got experience. There's value in that. And you're holding my hand through it. And, and I, and I like have the ability to go and implement that at my company. Most people have no idea what they need. That my experience is that most people have not a clue what the problems actually are in their business. They've got a gut feeling. They uh, have certain intuition. They've had experiences, but they don't have access to the right data. They don't have the right technology and tools showing them what specifically is needed. And then they, like, they just don't have uh, the right information. And so I, I get people all the time asking me questions. I need help with this, this, and this. So I say, what's holding your business back? I follow up with a number of pointed questions to, to get the information I need to say, well, it seems like this is really your problem. Show me this data, print out your PL. show me the KPI for this. And either they have bad data or no data at all, right? So you got to start there. But I know that because that's how I started. That's what I went through, right? Uh, most of these coaches, uh, most of them are just like salespeople, right? If we're honest, like uh, like they can they can teach you closes, yeah. they can teach you objection handling, could teach you, you know, all of that. And it, but most of them, I don't know why people spend money on coaches un unless the coach tailor makes what they're going to suggest to your specific need or issue or challenge in the business. But most of those people aren't even qualified to identify what that is. So I think that's, the, there's a, there's a lot of information there, but one, there's a wide array of coaches. A lot of them are just these uh, social media sales gurus that don't really have, that, that never run a successful business or most of them have them are personally bankrupt, you know, but they won't show about that on, on uh, social media Two, you get the best practices groups, most of which today are, are smorgasbords of stuff and have some level of support, but not the handholding needed to go at, back and actually implement something like here's a tool. Here's how you implement the tool. Oh, by the way, when your technicians say this, this isn't rebel, you know, you need to have this meeting first to, you know, so there's a whole bunch of stuff that's just overlooked and it's like people are looking for a silver bullet and they're willing to pay it. Yep. They'll pay for the silver bullet and never really get it. Um, yeah. So, you know, the industry's made a big, big change. Um, in 2011, you know, when I was part of the first PE firm to now, that's 13 years. 
Okay. In 13 years, this industry has flipped upside down on its head and back on its feet again in a whole nother direction. However, the way we're running our business is still pre-1999, right? And don't you feel like that the coaching that should be happening now should be built on, you know, modern principles like being more efficient, um, building building systems that reduce you know, the amount of effort that it takes to do anything, whether it's to do a job, whether it's to do your marketing better, whether it's to to handle the operations in your business. And and that's not being taught out there. What We're still teaching what we were learning from Frank Blaw and those guys in the 80s and 90s. We haven't really, and and those guys are awesome. And they, they are the reason why I am where I am today. What I went to a Contractor 2000 meeting in 1999 and it changed my life. And, and because I took it and I built my business based off of these basic principles that they had created at that time. And, and then I've expanded on those principles. And I, I know that from what, when I started my business in 96 to where I started Billy Go in 2018, the world of difference in how to run a business, right? All I had was a yellow pages ad that I could make money on. Um, back then, if you moved the phone numbers, move, you know, you couldn't move your phone number. So you lost all those contacts. You, so you couldn't move. There was all these things that now you can go wherever you want. If you have a number, you take it with you across the country and it's still your number. Those things are, are you know, that's modern technology that's moving forward, but yet we've done nothing to help these businesses, um, uh, build themselves into, the money makers and the and the efficient businesses like most modern tech companies are we we are yeah we sell air conditioners but at the end of the day we need to evolve into a tech company yeah uh, yeah i mean the, the last 3 to 5 years in business like specifically like the last 3 years the the speed the acceleration of how the business has changed has been rapid Right. And if you haven't kept up with that, if you haven't evolved your business model in the last three years, you're antiquated already. Oh, you know, if, if, if you're a software, you're, you're, you're running a software company. If you don't evolve your software, it's, it's antiquated in three years. Right. It's like a, effectively worthless. So it's, it's a constant development cycle. And most of these groups don't, you know, they haven't evolved in the last 15, 20 years. And, and, and the tools haven't evolved. Like uh, all of the tools that, that uh, I, advise or I, I'm really going to throw out there or give away. It, it's all stuff that we've built because we've run into these different challenges in the, in the business and we need to continue to expand. So we've built them internally and use them internally. So if I'm telling somebody, Hey, I think you should do this. So I ran into that problem and this is how I resolved it. Try this. Right. And I think that's what we have to evolve into. It's, it's like, uh, you know, going to uh, a meeting at, uh, you know, whatever, uh, allowed to say any specific things, like going to the next star meeting, right? And they say, hey, uh, you know, I'm stuck. Okay, well, you need to add air conditioning to your plumbing business. Well, how the hell does that help me get unstuck in plumbing? It doesn't. Exactly. It's like, that. that's not the answer, right? Or, or you need to add this, or we need to grow this. It was like, we need, now they're making you fat and heavy and overhead, and maybe your revenue's grown, but they didn't solve the problem that, that you were placed with. You got the $4 million in plumbing, and five years later, you may have a $7 million business, but you're still at $4.2 million in plumbing. You know, it just, it, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, I saw this uh, personally with some contractors that I was helping that were stuck, and they just couldn't get going, and they had a couple of coaches on the payroll. It was in their financial statements and, and they were running a 41%, 41% labor cost. And, and I said, why haven't we fixed that? What, what is going on? And let me tell you the repercussions. I mean, what's happening is, is we're treating the symptoms. We're not treating the cause. That's what real good coaching should be able to help you do is treat the cause, not the symptom. And when we treat the symptom, we continue to have problems. And so it's like lipstick, if you will. So this guy had 41% labor cogs. And to me, that's double what I, that's more than double than what I, what we run and what our, you know, Sarah clients are advised to run. And the answer that he got 
from these two entities was, well, that's just the way it is. It's inflation and cost her up. And I'm like, are you kidding me? This is what they told you. And he's like, yes. And we're not here to condemn anybody. These are very popular, you know, organizations that he was dealing with. And he was paying two of them. And when you added up what he was paying them and what he was paying to go to their events and what he was paying for, you know, the airplane and all the stuff that he was doing, he was paying them more than his salary. And so, yeah. to, so to me, uh, that is, that's what we have to stop. We have to quit chase as a business owner, as a tech or whatever in the business, we got to stop chasing these silver bullets and we got to make real decisions and those real decisions are made from your financial statements it's not from something that's all shiny you can have the best rehash program in the world and that ain't going to fix your business it's not yeah. going to do it you can have the best marketing guy in the world that's giving you calls all day long but that doesn't fix your business that's that's, that's, that's not, my that's my favorite thing when they have like these like and, and i i work with and have companies and we're members of multiple organizations all have their own fun, cool stuff and like going to the events. And I go to the events occasionally. Uh, but what I notice is so, like sometimes it'll be like EGIA, uh, BDR, for example, or BDR and uh, Nextstar. Like I'll look at them and both of them have conflicting information. Like they're telling you two different things. And it's like, how is that possible? It, 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 it's just like, here's here's what I think is if you really want to get dirty about it. Most consulting organizations don't have a vested interest in seeing you become massively successful. And, uh, you don't need them anymore. You know, just like, well, yeah, when, when, when all of a sudden you go from, you know, making 2% and a hundred thousand dollars a year in profit to $5 million a year and in, in unlimited scale, what do you need that company for? What do you need that group of people for? You've surpassed them. Right. And, and so the dirty little secret is no one's going to, you know, they want to keep you at this certain range. It's kind of like, uh, you know, there's some franchise groups out here in our space and we won't, I guess we'll not get into specific franchise groups, but the model of the franchise groups is we want to partner with companies between this size and this size. Right. And the idea is to keep them between that size because we take a percentage of revenue, we do this and, and those they're easy to manage the size. And if they get too big, then they, then they be, you know, get this, you know, perception that maybe they're too big for the franchise or maybe they can't, you know, let's, we shouldn't be paying this much in franchise fees. We shouldn't be, uh, you know, maybe now we, we know more than them. So they, they try to stay within this like tight little framework because they know they'll stay there forever and keep getting their fees. And, and that's just not right. Like if, if I'm coaching somebody or if my team is coaching somebody, I will have a structure in place that says, this is like, I'm, I'm treating it like an acquisition. Like you're a company that I just acquired. I got a 12 week acquisition timeline of everything that we're going to implement and everything that needs to happen. And, you know, your pay is going to be contingent upon the success of that business as it's integrating into me. I, it's like, if you're not treating it like one of your own businesses and growing it, including being brutally honest with the GM owner, whoever, and saying, you know what, you're not the right guy to do this. Find somebody else to replace you. Like that's the level of, of honesty and, you know, that you need to have to actually make an impact on a lot of these businesses. Well, you were part of building a really huge business. And when, when it was 10 million, you didn't run it like you did when it was 200 million. Right. No, it's, it's impossible. Way different tools, way different technology, way different. I mean, you, you have to expand your band, but it, like as business evolves, all of your tools, systems, structures, et cetera, need to evolve with it. Exactly. And so there's increments even at the smallest level. When you're 1 million, you're not the same business at 3 million. It takes a whole nother set of tools and yeah. manager management style to go from one to three. From three to five, just that $2 million gap is a big change. And when you go over 7 million, you're nothing like you were before if you want to get to 10. And that's where you come in and you teach the fundamentals to get to those milestones. You don't teach the, um, I want to call it the shiny objects, if you will. You have to teach to the, um, the cause, not the, not the uh, symptom. And yeah. fix the cause to be able to grow the company and continue to make profits. And 
one thing that I'm very astute about is as I'm building companies, I build them to make money the entire journey. Where where most companies, which is hard to do, it's it makes it. it I don't think it makes it twice as hard. I think it makes it like four times harder to do that. So you want to build companies and make money while you're building. And I'm talking about 20% plus growth and still making more money than you made the year before while you're doing it. Because growth is expensive. And I don't think people understand that because I have a lot of people come to me and I'm like, oh, I've been stuck at $3 million for so many years. If I could get the five, all my problems go away. And I'm like, no, they don't. They double. Yeah. The problems get worse. And so you got to figure out the $3 million problem before you can go to five. Well, we're going back to the original question I posed at $3 million. Typically, like the the problem, the thing that's holding it back isn't like I need better digital marketing or I need better systems that it's like typically it's you. Yep. It's it's you. you know? <laughs> it and, and and that and that's the hard <laughs> truth. And, and, and I'm fine with telling somebody that because I've I've I will readily admit when, you know, there are a lot of better GMs than me. There are a lot of better salespeople. There's a lot of better people at all aspects of the business. And the only reason I've been able to scale businesses so rapidly and successfully over time is I, I know that I'm fully aware that I am not the best at any of those things, but I know how to identify the best people and I know how to arrange them in such a way that it leads to profitability and growth. And that is a sign of an entrepreneur because that's exactly how I build my businesses. I don't know how to do everything, but I know how to put it together and make the best people uh, prosper in that situation. You know, you mean you're not in the back room coding somewhere with uh, whatever your language mm. is, building your software? No, no. Oh. no I, I just, just kind of, I, I kind of envision you every weekend. You're just sitting there. I don't, I don't know the first thing about computer code. <laughs> and that's the, that's why I'm successful because I don't know, but I do know what I need to run a successful business. And then I can teach people how to put it in code. That there I you do. go. That I do. <laughs> um, and so, and that's really what we got to do as owners, entrepreneurs, we have to find our strengths, even as a, a technician, a plumber, or someone in the office that wants to aspire to a higher level. It's you got to take a, a look at yourself. It's it's yourself that needs to grow and you need to learn more about what you do. And everyone has strengths. Everybody on this planet has been given some kind of ability that makes them unique. Yep. And you got to discover what that is. And when you discover what that is, I didn't just, I didn't know, I didn't know I was going to be good at managing people and that my my desires were to build businesses. I could care less about running businesses. I don't like running them. That's the last thing I want to do. That's boring. That's going to the office, sitting in the office, doing the same thing every day. I want to build it. So that's why I find success because I'm always working on the business. I'm never in it, ever, never. Even in the beginning, I'm not in it. Never want to be in it. I want to be on it. And that's, if I could teach anything, let's just make that conversion. <laughs> That's that's the number one thing. We say it a lot in this industry, but do we actually do it? I mean, I'll never I'll never forget the day that we did our first million dollar day in, in, in installed sales. And in that day, and, and the reason why I'll never forget it, because I was sitting with my partner uh, outside next to his pool smoking cigars in the middle of the week, that day that we sold a million dollars. And uh, the reason we did it because uh, it was not him or I out there in the field selling. If it were left, uh, uh, if we were at that point in the business, we'd be uh, a fraction of that. Let's just say, <laughs> very small <laughs> nice. fraction of that. Yeah. <laughs> very, okay. very, very small. That's right, because your jobs have changed. You, you yeah. went from, um, you know, building the business a certain way, and then when you got it to a million dollars in one day, think about that, folks. Everybody's listening to us out there. One million dollars in one day. I would be smoking a cigar as well um, by a pool, a really nice pool that I own, right? Um, <clears throat> and it's it's possible for all of us to get there to do all that, but you have to go through the journey and you have to learn from your mistakes and you have to be vulnerable. I mean, if you're not vulnerable, you're never going to learn because when, that, like you said a minute ago, you don't have a problem telling someone where they suck, right? And I don't either. 
And my point of view is, if you get offended, if I tell you you suck, and but I'm going to explain to you where you suck at. I'm not going to, I'm not picking on you. I'm actually telling you this is what you're doing out of love. Yes. Right? Yeah, you're doing it. You're like, you it genuinely is. want to help somebody and sometimes help and you're, just, you're speaking the hard truth. And if they get offended, they're probably not going to make it. If they no. don't get offended, they're going to tech. They're going to tech. Okay, so help me. That's all right. Here, let me show you. It's not that hard. Just do this. And that's really what it takes. And I think we need more of that in the coaching world. Um, I'll be honest with you. Um, you have people you coach. We coach people together. I have people I coach. And we're that's our coaching style. So if 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 you ever want to do something, you know, with either one of us, be ready because we're going to tell you the truth. But we're going to do it with, but we're going to fix it, help you fix but it. But it's, it's it's quantifiable, right? So yeah, so like right. there's a, there's when you're looking to fix anything in business. I actually made a post about it this morning because somebody asked about it. I'm like the very simple answer is if you want to, if you're struggling with something, if you like this guy said he'd gone two days of terrible HVAC sales, right? And and I'm like, well, the short answer is like if I have a challenge like that in any area of the business, one, you quantify what it is. So uh, you know, I'm budgeted for this, this is what's happening, this is what it's cost me. I've quantified what it is. Then I gotta number two, identify what's causing, what's the root cause of that issue. So is it specific technician performance? Is it, uh, I don't have my three-day call board set up. It's the call center. Like, let's, let's go through, you know, what part of the system is broken after we've identified it. And then let's like take the most important part is like develop a strategy and take action. Even if it's not, you know, hundred percent, the, the, the uh, fix it all strategy, like jump in, take action, say, Hey, this I've identified. It's uh, these two technicians. This is the problem. Bum, bum, bum. Here's a strategy. We're going to address it right now and do it immediately. People that tell you that it takes forever to you know, change, if, especially the larger your business gets, it takes a longer time. To, you can change a business today. Like yep. if you have the leadership skills and the management skills and the communication skills to you know, have honest uh, conversations with your team and you know what you're talking about and you got data, like put the data in front of them, get their buy-in, go out there and stop doing this at the very next call. Like change your business today. That's the best part about home services. We eat what we kill every day. We can change our destiny today. It doesn't yep. have to be, oh, this is going to be a 12-month process. Yep. Forget that. Well, I'll give you a perfect example. When I, I acquired um, my first company, Berkey's, um, it was, there was the owner of the company passed away and they were doing new construction plumbing and they were doing plumbing for me. I was building houses with a, with a home builder. And I went over to talk to them about, you know, this thing is falling apart. I got to find other plumbers or whatever. Anyway, I couldn't get any plumbers to bid my work. So I went back over, apologized to them. And next thing I know, she made me an offer I couldn't refuse. I didn't know anything about running the business. But I ended up with a business. And I said, look, I'm going to do everything in my power to pay you what, what you what you need for this company. So the first morning I go in, at 6 o'clock in the morning, we have a company meeting. And I've got about 25, 30 guys standing there and I stand up and I start talking about, and I was young, I was a young, a young guy, I think 29 or 30. And I started talking about, yeah, Hey, I'm here. We're going to, we're going to make this thing great business, blah, blah, blah. And then when I was started talking all about all the great things I'm going to do and all that stuff, they started walking out. They, yep. they left. I went from like 25 or 30 employees to down to 10. In the first five minutes of owning this company, yeah, that's it's amazing. That's a that's going to wake anybody up. So I basically was looking at failure in the first five minutes of the business. I'm like, I literally could have lost the entire company, and I learned something that night because it wore on me all day, and it you know I kept it together. Um, the ten that stayed, and that night I reviewed my my monologue if you will about being the new owner and i'm like holy crap no wonder they left i would have left if i was hearing what i was saying and what they needed to hear was not what i was saying and i learned from that and the next day i went in and i started making my you know i became a leader i had to decide you're going to be a leader you're going to lose this thing in the first month and i had to change who i was i had to make myself become a leader um and and then start implementing and getting their trust and and 
that's what we're talking about on this episode today is when maybe you're, it's not that dramatic. Maybe it's not that life of death or your business. What happened to me in the first five minutes of owning a plumbing company that I knew absolutely nothing about. Um, maybe it's not that drastic. Maybe it's something much smaller than that. But the difference is, is I was willing to change right then. And that goes back to what you just said. You can change your business in five minutes. It does not matter. It can change the way you lead. You can change the way you go to market. You can change the way you treat people. You can change the way you develop ideas or implement ideas. You can change everything. All you got to do is change it. But know for sure that you're changing it correctly. And if you miss it, that's okay. Mistakes is what we learn from. If you miss it, that's okay. And then you learn from that mistake. And I, you know, looking back on it, how I stayed positive was I'm like, well, at least I don't have that big of a payroll. <laughs> I'll tell uh, you, like o- owning and operating <laughs> these businesses can be the most gut wrenching, heartbreaking, disappointing, uh, you know, when you can't make payroll, you got to upset customer or somebody wants to sue you over something or, you know, something bad would happen in the house or something happened to one of your employees. Like it can be a constant, a, a massive stressor. Like that's why, you know, nobody would know, but you're only 20 years old, but you know, like it's a, it's a big, big stressor. Right. And I think one of the keys in this business is not Ill, like you have to be able to hold that in and not let that impact how you go about dealing with your people every day. Right. If you don't have that barrier where you got a GM, you got somebody that's managing and it's still at the point where it's just you, like you have to be able to set those things aside and got to go out there and motivate these people. And part of it is you got to get to know, you know, what fires them up? Why do they come to work every day? Why do they choose to work here? Like uh, I, when, it, you know, I, I learned this trick, uh, after a couple of different experiments like yours, where I go in and, and I will interview all of the existing employees just to find out what they like. Like, what, 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 tell me what you like about working here. Why did you choose to work here? Would you recommend working here? Would you not recommend working here? Tell me what, what would you change about this thing? And then I, you know, make all the notes and I get to know the individual people. And then whatever we integrate and implement beyond that, I can at least point back to this and say, hey, you know, a lot of this was taken from the feedback that you gave me. The, the idea, like make it their idea. And then, you know, you have to have a series of meetings and things to like build buy-in, but you can't just come in and be like, I own this now. I'm the boss and here's what we're going to do. Otherwise, just like that, le- every problem that you have in business always comes down to a management. It's not a sales problem. It's not a, uh, you know, ops problem. It's a management and communications problem. People don't every time. quit. People are like, you know, if somebody's, if you got a if mass exodus in your business, it's because of a management and communication problem, not because of what's happening on that end. That is exactly right. I'm glad you yeah. brought that up because it is, it comes down to that every time. And, you know, it comes and that leads into like culture, right? And I know you like, you have a favorite saying about what's, what's the meaning of culture? Um, yeah. Uh, what is you it? Can't you can't spell, you, you can't spell culture without cult. Without yeah. cult. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's, it's, it's like these people, it's like this buzzword that, you know, I'm sure has good intent, but, uh, uh, this buzzword that you hear, you're not a private equity in all. Like, I'm a servant leader. I'm a, you know, I've had, I've had the, the the most horrendous, horrible human beings come in and say, "Oh, I'm a servant leader." I'm like, you uh, are serving yourself, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, and, and by the way, this is kind. Of, this can be a vicious business. Like, you know, servant leaders. If you're truly a servant leader that doesn't have a backbone, you're going to get chewed up and spit out. So, you know, servant leader. Oh. Anyways, go back to culture. There we go. Let's get him. <laughs> That's really my job. Um, if y'all haven't noticed, I got to keep him in line here. Um, no, anyway. Hey, that's a great way to put it. So yeah, let's let's uh, talk about that for a second. I mean, um, cult, you got to create a cult. You got to create fanatics about your business, right? And and that goes back to management. And no KPI in the world is going to make a difference if you can't manage a company. It doesn't matter. And so you need to have management 
training if you if you're gonna really improve your business, right? But being able to manage, being able to implement, being able to carry through your change and your implementation and continue to make that the 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 new way, it takes all three of those. You can't implement it, give it to someone. What a lot of owners do is they give it to someone else right away instead of being there side by side. Well, maybe that person's better at implementing whatever it is you're going to do, but it still needs to come from the top. Had they bought in all the way, the person that you handed this off to. Oh, and by the way, you handed off 15 other things to this person so far this year. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. I was like, okay, here's the here's the vision that we have, and and here's the goal. We want to be the the biggest, most profitable company in the area. And then you you say that and try and get by, and then you think everybody's bought in, and all they heard was this guy wants us to make him rich. You know, yeah. that's what yeah. that's what that's that's what that means when yes. when you say something like that. That's right. <laughs> that's exactly right. And and so that. That to me is what's not being coached. You know, I think a lot of people when they see this episode or, or and see the 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 name of the episode or whatever, um, they're going to think that we're going to be hammering on the coaches in this industry, and that's not what this is about. This is about taking ownership of what you're learning. You know, because there's great coaching out there. Um, I don't agree with all of it uh, because we've moved on. Our industry is changing, and we need to step up and and move yeah. over to these things. We need to. It's time. You know, we can't keep using the same metrics that we used to do. I know there was a, there was a metric out there like two, I think if you could get over 200,000, 250,000 for every employee, um, you're, you're doing great. But anything over that means you don't have enough people, you're stressing your people out. That was a metric that was thrown at me when I was talking about, you know, we're at $380,000 a cost per employee, some crazy number. And then I remember one of these gurus shouted out, well, that means you're just wearing your people out. You're stretching them out. You're stretching them thin. You don't have enough people to take care of the business. And I'm like, no, it's the complete opposite. My people work half as much as they used to. And now we can perform. Making That's a lot of money, working, you know, I mean, seems seems like a your solution is better. And, yeah. and, and so it's it just goes back to just, you know, leadership coaching your own people, coaching yourself and, and not trying to do everything at once and then learning from people that have actually run companies. I think that's a big thing is you need to learn from people that have, have done it. We've done it. A lot of people that yeah. coach there have not done it. Um, um, that, and we've done it in a modern way, right? We've adapted. I mean, you wouldn't build a $200 million business if you didn't adapt. If you didn't change yeah. the way you is there's just no way possible that you could do it unless you change the way you run the business. And I wouldn't, you know, I've run, you know, I've grown big companies. I've grown them fast. Um, and I had to change the whole way that I was, you know, each step had to be different. Right. It was definitely easier the second time. I mean, I already had the roadmap and I, my roadmap took me to, you know, 40 something million dollars in revenue in five years, you know, combined revenue. Um, and so, and, and it did it because I already knew all the, all the traps that I didn't need to go through anymore or any of the things that set you back. Right. And, and then we implemented new well, and you got technology, advances technology. in technology, man. <laughs> Holy cow. In the last couple of years with AI and this, it's like you can create almost anything that you need to help you. Like they're commercially, literally, you're the sign behind you, Sarah. It's like, you know, it's sitting right in front of you if you know how to use it and and exploit the data that you need to help, you know, make the decisions to grow. It's got to be good data. And that's the thing that software should yeah. be able to do. And that is not happening in our industry. The data, uh, data is not good. It, it is not. It is and absolutely that's not. I, that's why I put my life savings on the line because there is no good data <laughs> and I had to go build it. And that is the whole reason why I'm doing this is because that gummit, you shouldn't have to work harder when you have software. My gosh, come on. We didn't have any software 15 years ago, really. And it wasn't this hard. It's harder now. 
with software. It's ridiculous. It's a, unbelievable to me how difficult it has become. And it should be making your life easier. And it should be helping you to grow your business and should be coaching you. It should be doing all of those things. That's what software should be doing. And that's why I got into it and why I pressed everything to do it. You know, well, not everything, but you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's, it's critically important. I mean, if you're going to build a business of any scale or magnitude of any level of profitability, it's got to be a data driven business. And, you know, you know, some people say it's got to be a sales organization. Yeah, that's partially true. It's got to be a people organization. Absolutely. They have to their culture, but part of that culture, part of that sales, it's got to be you know, like the decisions have to be made based on data. You got to get rid of all of this, you know, uh, non-empirical evidence and, and uh, people saying, well, you need this or you need that. It's just, just an opinion. That's all noise. It's got to be data driven. Yes, sir. And Without that good data, you're just not, it, it's going to make your job harder, period. And, and knowing what to do with the data as well and improving on it. But so the, the sum of this ep episode to me is we as an industry have got to make some changes We to move forward. It is inevitable. And we have got to move forward with parameters that are different. Um, you know, there's technology when done right, it's going to allow you to build a business more efficiently um, and more simply um, because we, we have very complicated businesses. That's why this is so hard. It, this is not going, I mean, if you have no offense to anybody that has um, a pool cleaning service, you only do one thing every day. You clean a pool. There's nothing else that you do really. You go to a different pool and you clean it. The next week on the same day, same time, you go to that same pool and you clean it. That's an easy business. That's not air conditioning, plumbing, and electrical at all. Every job, that's why we are technicians. I just love our technicians in our industry because every day is a brand new day because it's never the same. It's not routine. There's a new problem that's been, whether it's the problem of whatever you're working on or it's how you deal with that customer that's different or whatever the different things are. Um, this is a very, very complicated industry and we need to simplify it. And that's that's why um, I'm, in, I'm in the business in software and as a contractor. And so anyway, I just wanted everybody to know today that, to, that we want you to start thinking about moving in 5% inc increments and, and follow us on YouTube at No BS with Billy and Landon. You can follow us there. We're going to be putting tips on there. We're going to make it very simple for you to learn the things that you need to learn. And there's no real cost to that at all. If you want to learn some stuff, click on the like button if you're watching this on YouTube, please, so that we can continue to grow. And also, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit the notification bell. We really appreciate it. And any comments that you have, we'll read through all the comments and we'll do shows on your comments so that we can help you out. Um, we're really wanting to have some fun here. And I uh, want to thank everybody for listening, but we have a, a surprise thing we do at the end of every show. You've just entered deeper into the No BS Zone with today's No BS Moment. Today's No BS is don't tell a homeowner they need to replace their ball cock. It's a fill valve. And that's no bullshit. <laughs> and by the way, you may want to choose another word for nipples as well. Oh, yeah. If you're in the nipples. They're pipe extenders now. And that is no bullshit. <laughs> no BS with Billy and Landon is produced and delivered to you by Sarah Systems. At Sarah Systems, we've created a better way to run your home service business and unlock unprecedented growth. Our field service software was designed by real home service professionals to help you save steps, charge for previously unbillable time, and win more business. But the true change requires more than software. Our live coaching helps you understand and control the aspects of your business that matter most. It's about time for a new era of service, and we are leading the way. If you're ready to join the hundreds of other contractors who've been able to increase profit margins more than 50% within six months, visit sarah.tech today. That's sarah, S-E-R-A, dot tech today.